Tall wins the next two games. It's 3-0 going into game four. Boy, the wonderful thing about watching Tall play chess is his ability to play so many different systems. I mean, it's like you're not going to, if you're going to bust him in one area, that's fine. He'll just find some other system that he can fall back on, and he just plays so many things. So here we have a kind of English, King's Indian. Right. Is this anything at all for... It's all sucking a pawn. Very interesting. Well, ma this is a major theoretical dispute. Um. Bagunyan looks a little bit puzzled by it. He should be aware of it, being a... Um, he hasn't taken the pawn. No. Being a, a big, ready, and Catalan player, I mean, I'm sure he's seen just about everything, had just about everything thrown against him. Still being 3-0 down, you think that uh, you might want to take something. Well, uh, it will be Vaganyan's intention to just kind of claim the whole board with an eventual E2, E4, or even an E2, E3. Very difficult for Tal to create counter chances. Probably right. going to play B5. Precisely. That's his major aim at the moment, B7, B5. Probably knight d5 is in order for white here. So as to be able to recapture it eventually on d5 with a pawn, thereby cramping black's game a bit. a2, a4 just doesn't inspire. And he allows b5. An interesting, if somewhat unusual, decision by Bagan Khan. Tiles played it, and he's going to take back on c4 with a knight, obviously. Again, here we're seeing uh, a little bit of uh, Vaganyan's originality and creativity at last. Um, <coughs> typical of Vaganyan to come up with a very unusual strategical concept I like so quickly. his position. I like his position. Yes. Because he uh, black can't really uh, atta uh, attack him in any way. It's, it's a kind of impervious position. Black can't move any pawns. Yes. Well, on the other hand, uh, black's pawn structure is quite sound, so... Um, all he really needs to do is exchange a bit of pieces and uh, get some wood off the board. And life should be pleasant once the end games uh, come around. I'm not so sure knight a5 was the correct way of getting rid of this knight on c4. Well, Vaganyan should develop some rooks. This uh, gives Tal an opportunity. Knight a5 is a funny move as well. Yes. This gives Tal an opportunity to. So get rid of two pieces for a rook and two pawns. Always a double-edged affair, and especially in blitz chess, but I might be tempted just to take that. Just to clear off some problems. Yes, and to set up a pawn barrier e6 and d5. Well, he hasn't done it. He's moved his queen out. right -o. Also not bad. This is the same kind of position that Gary Kasparov had in one of his games with George F. It's very hard for Black to get counterplay in this kind of position. Yes. Rook c2, an interesting move, preparing to double rooks on the c line and eventually play knight a4. I wonder if Tal's ever thinking about playing bishop h6 in a position like this. Just to annoy White a little bit. And perhaps yes. provoke the move f4. That would be more than annoying, in fact. Now he's and done it. Now he's done it. Yes. He's made the sacrifice. I'm not so sure it works, because it, it, it looks to me that there's going to be a knight d5 in the position. Uh, right about now, in fact. <laughs> yes, now. And there's a sudden, enormous problem on c8. Well, the game is over. Tal's completely lost. Queen takes c2. c2. And you're a piece down. For nothing. And being attacked, I might add. Yes, yeah, this is hopeless. Uh, let's look at the time. A quick time check tells us that Vaganyan has plenty of time, in fact. Yes, he's just... Uh, a piece up. Just a piece up for nothing, yes. Two pawns, but that... A pawn is a very scraggly looking thing. A problem child. Bishop A3. No. Now he's taken on G7. Now take on B1. Take back. King takes. And now it's the normal the normal problem in a, in a blitz game where somebody wins material. He's actually got to try and win the game. It's so difficult to do this. But this was very silly for Vaganyan to trade bishops. I would have played Bishop A3 and eliminated that knight on D5. It wasn't such a great idea to trade queens either. So often we see these endings where it's difficult to win. Yes. And now Tal is going to play something like d5 and king d6. It's a solid position. 
Yes. Uh, well, still Knight A4 uh, by White should certainly eventually win the game. Mm. Knight A4 better be played soon, otherwise it's going to be a dead draw. Yes. And he, he, he won't, yes, he'll move the knight. Oh, oh what? What's he? Oh. That was what we call a, ha a hand check. <coughs> should be seven. Must admit, uh, Vaganyan's play thus far in this, what is in reality a technical win, has not been very. Tull's job is to, tr is to trade pawns, trade pawns like crazy, because at the end of the day, White's got the wrong coloured H pawn. And of course, this A pawn for Black is still on the board. Check. Tull must trade pawns on the king side somehow. The more pawns he can trade, the better his drawing chances. F5, yes? Yes, I think this was a good move by Vaganyan, nonetheless, to provoke F5. But I don't understand why he he didn't go back with the knight to prevent... Bishop F7 I, I find meaningless. Yes. What? Now, now he's trading Take pawns. That. Well, at least he hasn't got the wrong coloured H-pawn anymore. <laughs> he's got rid of it. And Tal's knight comes back in the game. White having two pieces against one. Uh, like two pawns in compensation, and Tal... <laughs> it, it, it's shocking how ineffectual Vaganyan's extra piece... Check again. ...has been thus far. Out comes the knight again. King d3. And uh, again a head check by Vaganyan in this time reveals that he has a minute and a half. My I'm god, he another pawn. continues to exchange pawns. But at least he's fixed a black pawn in f5 as a weakness. It's difficult. Huh? No, he's what was that? Bishop was going to g8 and then moved to h5. I don't Check. understand why it was necessary to move to h5. Attacking the f4 pawn. Bishop f7. Out again. How about king d4 or something? Now he's pushing, that. yeah. This is very interesting that Tal has now two, two pawns, two plus pawns on the wings. And time about level, both just over a minute. And recommend knight c3. Yes. Which Tom has been accepted. Bringing his knight out. Knight staying in touch three. with the f4 pawn. Oh, now Tal pushes the a pawn. Check. He's winning the pawn on f5, perhaps. Yes, but he's not got to cope with the pawn on a3. Oh, my God. Uh. <laughs> How's he going to stop that? How's he going to stop it? Unbelievable. How does he stop it? How does the knight get back? It doesn't. It doesn't. He may as well offer a draw here. Huh? At least salvage something. Tal has just been amazing. Atrocious technique by Vaganyan. He's resigned.
the crowd going wild, absolute jubilation. Michal Tal, a popular winner, to put it very, very mildly indeed. Tal, World Blitz champion. Rafael Vaganian loses to Mikhail Tal, Misha as they call him, the granddad of the Grand Masters. He has won the World Blitz Championship. For Raymond Keane and Yasu Sarawan, I'm Dave Reynolds. Goodbye from St. John, New Brunswick.